tips for PG theory exams. In this video we are going to see how to prepare for theory exams. During our residency, we don't get enough time to prepare for theory exams. During UG, we get enough practice to write answers where we have multiple exams like post ends, term endings and prelims, but during PG, we don't get theory exams writing practice. During PG, we are very busy at work, therefore, we read only regarding the cases we see, do case discussions, and read important articles and guidelines. In the end, we have to prepare for the theory exams where we have 180 minutes to solve a 100 marks paper. So, what should we read in the last three months? Only the important topics should be read, especially the questions asked in previous year's university exams. It is better to start from the previous year paper and gradually read more papers as time permits. Another option is to read topic-wise. Read high-yielding topics like recent review articles, new guidelines, vaccines and national programs. Focus mainly on learning the definitions, specific causes, specific clinical features, specific investigations and specific treatment. Also read newer advances in the management of common conditions. How to study? Standard textbooks, articles and notes should be read. Books like Solved Papers Pediatrics are useful. Read recent review articles and new guidelines for recent advances. It is necessary to either mark or highlight the important points or make notes, as this will help in the revision later on. Remember, revision is the key. We can anyways attempt any question from our syllabus, but the purpose of reading is to write more accurate answers. It is also important to practice writing. During our residency, we don't have the habit of writing continuously for long. So, writing practice will be of help, as during exams we have to write continuously for 3 hours. Diagrams should be practiced and used during exams as they are visually attractive and also cover more area on the answer paper, thus making the answer look longer. Flowcharts are easier and useful to write an answer in lesser time. They too cover enough area on the answer sheet. Although remember, if you are not sure about the answer, it's better to write a paragraph instead of making a flowchart, as mistakes can be easily picked up in a flowchart. While preparing, discussion is a good option. Topics can be discussed with a senior, colleague or junior. Discussion or group study helps in maintaining a high energy and enthusiasm. It's also useful from a practical point of view. It is important to read from a single source repeatedly, as visual memory is very useful during exams. What things to keep ready before exams? If exams are battles, pens are the weapons. It is very important to keep good quality pens. Use blue color pens instead of black. Keep 4 to 5 pens with you. Use pencils, especially lead pencils, to draw margins and diagrams, and to underline important points. Keep an eraser with you. Scale is important to draw diagrams and margins, and underline. What to do on the day before exam? There are four papers for MD and DNB, and three papers for DCH. Nervousness and anxiety are maximum before the first paper. Therefore, it is important to focus more on the syllabus which is covered in the first paper. One day before the first paper, it is important to revise only the very important topics. Eat light food to avoid stomach upset. During our preparation, we don't eat and sleep properly. But, during exams we are both hungry and sleepy, which badly affects exam performance. Thus, it's important to sleep properly. What to do on the day of exam? After a proper sleep, get up early, and get ready. Reach the exam center before time, especially on the first day. Make sure that the admit card and identity card are with you. Check where your exam room is and the seat to avoid the last minute rush. Just a few minutes before entering the exam room, stop reading and relax. Allow the brain to take a small break, to allow the neurotransmitters work at the main time. Eat some snacks or energy drink like glucose water or ORS just before entering the exam room. This will keep your energy level high. Also, go to the washroom too. This will avoid distraction during exam time. What to do during exams? 
In the exam hall, you will get the answer sheet first. It is important to draw margins so that it is easier to write the answers pointwise. You will get 180 minutes for 100 marks, divide time equally. For example, give 1.8 seconds for each mark. That is, solve a 10 marks question in maximum 18 minutes. Solve a 15 minutes question in maximum 27 minutes. Solve a 25 marks question in maximum 45 minutes. Attempt all the questions. It is possible that if you know an answer properly, you may give extra time to that answer. Don't do that. Otherwise you will not get enough time for other questions. Even if you write a lengthy answer, you won't get extra marks. Attempt even the answer you don't know. Write whatever you know about the topic asked, but don't leave it blank. Write the answers point-wise, as this looks neat and easy to read and understand. This also helps in covering more area in the answer sheet. If you get a short note on any clinical topic, then write subheadings like definition, etiology, pathophysiology, classification, differential diagnosis, clinical features, symptoms and signs. Investigations, basic and specific, treatment, symptomatic and specific, complications and prognosis. When a specific question is asked, for example, pathophysiology or complications, then write only that much. It is very important to underline important subheadings, points and words, especially those words which are specific for the topic and you are confident that they are correct, this will highlight them. Utilize each and every minute of the time given. If you attempt all questions and are able to write for a period of 3 hours, then it is more likely that you will pass the exams, at the end of the exam, in the last 5 to 10 minutes, it's better to just go through the answer sheet and underline more points. After the first paper, you get a gap of 1 to 2 days, take proper rest, and revise important topics for the upcoming paper. These tips will definitely be useful for you. Preparatory time is a very stressful and delicate period. It's important to handle it with care. All the best for your exams. Please like, comment, share and subscribe.